welcome to Common Ground, an inside look at Suffolk County. I'm your host, Sheriff Steve Tompkins. Now today we have one of the most extraordinary personalities, two actually of the most extraordinary personalities, uh, serving the citizens of the Commonwealth. And the first would be Deb Ray, the CEO of the Big Sisters organization, and Evelyn Reyes, who is also a big sister. And they're going to talk about the organization, and they're going to talk about the importance of the organization and all the uh, great things that they do and the meaningful and beneficial things that they do for young girls and young ladies in the city. So without any further ado, Deb, it's so good to see you again. Nice to see you, Steve. You Thanks haven't been here me. like in a hundred years. I know. That's true. That's true. So tell us what's going on over there at the organization. Well, we are in our 62nd year of serving serious? girls in Boston. No kidding. Yes. And this year, we're going to serve 2,600 girls okay. in mentoring relationships. So we're really proud of that. Now, how do girls, uh, young ladies, girls, young ladies, families, find you? Do you, act, do, you do an active uh, outreach recruitment campaign, or do folks just know about you and show up at your doors? Well, we're in the community. We're in all the neighborhoods. We're always recruiting for big sisters. Mm -hmm. And word, it's really word of mouth right now. We mm -hmm. don't have to recruit for girls because they come to us. Mothers call us and say they really need help with their, their daughter and they want an assistance from a big sister, mm -hmm. from a mentor. We have guidance counselors and social workers. So they, all, they are coming to us. And there are sometimes a girl will call herself and say, I want a big sister. But um, they come from all over Boston and all the neighborhoods in greater Boston too. Mm -hmm. But they come to us. And what's the age range? 7 to 15. So they are okay. matched between the ages of 7 and 15, but we support the relationship between the little and the big till the little sister is 20. Okay. And then she's of age to become a big sister, okay. actually. So. Yeah, because I was going to ask you about that. If, you, if the cutoff is 15, you know, we know that there are a lot of young girls out there that still need that kind of nurturing and support, you know, beyond the age of 15. That's so true. So we, we you know. have staff at Big Sister that are social workers and their professionals who support the relationships between the big and the little sister mm -hmm. so that they have a safety net so the big sister has somebody to call when she wants guidance or I activity ideas or is maybe having an issue with the little sister and wants someone to talk to so mm -hmm. there are staff that support that relationship so we support it till the age of 20 but we usually make the match by the time the girl's 15 she's matched but there are times when you know, a girl could be 16 or 17, mm -hmm. and her mother calls us and said, you know, I think my daughter would really benefit from a big sister, and we'll match her. We'll find the right woman to match her with. So I'm we'll support you, that I'm going to ask you about that in a little bit, but Evelyn, talk to me about actually being a, uh, a big sister and why you're involved with the organization. Um, I've been a big sister since 2011, so it'll be three years in May, and mm -hmm. I'd always wanted to do it but I never found the time because I was quite busy. And then in 2011, I had the time and I said, this is the time to do it. And the reason I did it was because I wanted to be able to share my knowledge of um, life mm -hmm. and advice that my mother taught me to some other little girl in the community. And I went to Big Sister, you know, I just called them up and said I wanted to come in and right. be matched. And I had very specific requirements. I wanted a young girl in Jamaica Plain, which is where I grew okay. up. And preferably a Latina. Mm -hmm. And I got matched with a little girl in Jamaica Plain, which was like a three block walk from my house. And she also happened to be from the Dominican Republic, which is where I'm from as well. How young when you say little, how young she was she? She was 11. Okay. She was 10, she was 10. She just she Now just you're still, 12. are you still engaged? Yes, we're okay. still matched. Okay, so now when you become a big sister, do you stay engaged all the way through? Or if the match doesn't work, and I understand what you're saying, Deb, about the match always works, but if it doesn't, can you then request a, a different young sister? Or, or how does I'll that work, I'll have to Deb? defer to Deb on that. Uh, if it doesn't work out, yes. It could be that we would rematch the big sister with another little sister, or it could be that the little sister wants to be matched with somebody else, but that does happen. Mm -hmm. But again, it's because we have those professionals on staff that are supporting that relationship, so it can, usually continues with that one person. So tell us about the experience, Evelyn. So what are some of the things that, well, first and foremost, how much time out of a day, week, month do you spend with your little sister? Well, at the, fir at the beginning, when you first get matched, you see your little sister every week once a week for three months and that's to help you bond with her and mm -hmm. get to know her and find out things like that and then after that you see her bi-weekly so I see her twice a month and mm -hmm. then in between we talk on the phone you know kids and technology so we text mm -hmm. and stuff like that so usually I'll text her early in the morning because she goes she gets up really early and I'll text her before work before school and we'll talk but I see her on a bi-weekly schedule. Now when you're with her is it for an hour 90 minutes? How much um, it, varies. it varies it um, varies I've had her for like six hours at some times, you know, okay. I'll take her to the movies, then we'll go have something to eat, and then I'm on, I take her on the MBTA, so that adds to the time we spend together. Okay. So I bring her back home, because I pick her up 
and then I bring her back home. So it could be anywhere from three hours to six hours, and weekdays and weekends. And tell me about the relationship between yourself and her biological mom or mom and dad. How does uh, that Mostly work? my relationship is with her mom. Her mm -hmm. dad I see every once in a while, but mm -hmm. his schedule is so different. He's almost never there when I pick her up. Right. Um, her mother is very nice, a very traditional Dominican mother, which is something that I'm accustomed to. Mm -hmm. And for her, she was really happy that she had a big sister for her daughter that spoke Spanish. So, right. and now, you know, I'll go over there and she's like, do you want to eat, sit down, have something to eat, you know? So, she, we have a very good relationship with the mom. So you're part of the family? Basically, I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Deb, talk to me, how important is it that the big sisters really do, are, 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 are woven into the fabric of the family of the little sister? How it important is important, is and it happens over time, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the bond, the relationship develops between the big sister and the little sister. And as that deepens, we see that the relationship between the big sister and the family deepens because it really is a holistic relationship, right. meaning that it's also, you know, the mother, the relationship the big sister has with the mother is important because they might be talking about what's going on with the little sister, right? right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's an important relationship, primary relationship between the big and the little, but then secondarily, it is with the family. So we hear stories all the time about little sisters, you know, being in the wedding of the big sister right. or going on family trips with the big sister and her family. And as Evelyn said, you know, um, Laz Mary, her little sister, mm -hmm. is part of her family mm -hmm. and her relationship with her husband. And it's wonderful because then the little sister can see the relationship between right. her big sister and somebody else, whether it's with, you know, her own kids, her husband, or extended family. So it's, it's really a benefit to that little sister to be a part of a family like that. So now you said that you have caseworkers or social workers yes. on staff. Yeah. Do you find that you also have to work with, or not have to, but that you work with outside or other agencies also collaboratively to, to, to give yes. the young sister and the big sister, you know, that total well-rounded experience? Absolutely. What For a number other, of reasons. Yeah, Okay, yeah, so it could be that the the girl needs services that we can't provide, mm -hmm. right? Because it's mentoring and it's it's not tutoring, it's not really specific about the relationship. It's more like a, an adult friend. Mm -hmm. So Evelyn and Blasmary spend all kinds of time together doing mm -hmm. many activities. But however, it could be that she has special needs that we can't address so that we'll right will partner with a health organization or a school or other support system to help that girl. We also, though, have relationships with camps, so we provide oh, camps cool. for girls during okay. the summer. And we provide opportunities for them to um, maybe get scholarships. So many of our little sisters get scholarships because we'll have a relationship with the school and find out that she could apply for a scholarship. Uh, we had a situation with a little sister last year got this opportunity to go to Tanzania with another with a company nice. who had an internship program where mm -hmm. part of the leadership program was to travel and to go to Tanzania to learn about service learning and then also work in the company. So we're, we work with many organizations throughout the city. We also partner with like the Boston Police Department who does training for big sisters mm -hmm. so they can keep safe while they're in the city as well as for staff. We have relationships with you know, health organizations, we have relationships with Boston Housing Authority, and that one is a really good one because they're identifying the little sisters that need special help, and then we're partnering with them to support that little girl. So many partnerships, we couldn't do it, we don't do it by ourselves. Mm. So you know what's interesting, so I grew up in a single parent household headed by my mom uh, in Harlem, in Spanish Harlem as a matter of fact, in New York City, and at one point we actually took in a border. You know, and it was another young lady much older than I. I was think I was in middle school at the time. But I found that she also became like a big sister to me because I didn't mm -hmm. have, I've got a younger sister now, but I didn't have any older siblings. And it was interesting because I felt that in certain aspects, in certain respects, I could talk to her about things that I really yeah. didn't feel comfortable talking to my mom about. Do mm -hmm. you find the same experience? Oh, definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, Bless Media and I talk about Whatever, I never bring anything up. Mm -hmm. She'll bring it up mm -hmm. and say, this happened at school, and, you know, this is happening, you know, here, and, you know, some of the stuff is confidential just of between course, her absolutely. and I. Sure. But we do talk about things that she may not necessarily talk to her mother about. Yeah, you know, and so from the standpoint of mentoring, you know, mm -hmm. which is one of the reasons why I really actually wanted to start a family and have my own family because I didn't have that male figure in the household when I was coming up. Mm -hmm. I also, there was this challenge to see if I could be not necessarily a better parent, but a more engaged parent, you know. And so now that I have young kids, I have a 13-year-old a daughter and a 15-year-old son, it's interesting, the whole mm -hmm. parenting dynamic, particularly when they get into the teenage years. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, yeah. what happened to that cute little kid that used to live here, yeah. you know? But, I mean... I find it fascinating 
to share my experiences. You know, I mean, we clearly at different times will have walked down the same path. I've mm -hmm. walked that path, they're walking that path. Now, do you find that some of the things that your little sister asks you about or talk to you about is some of the things that you experienced as a young adult or a child yourself? To, to some degree, I think that society has changed a lot from when true. I was in school. True. And um, like things like bullying existed back then, but it wasn't in the yeah. media like it is now. Yeah. And you know, the the young the kids get sexually active younger and yeah. you know she's talking about things that when I was in the fifth grade I just was not talking about right. so but there are things that are very similar we have similar backgrounds where we both grew up in JP in public schools you know the Dominican background the culture helps to bond us a lot as well but there are many things that come up that match my, my upbringing. So watch this trick question. Do you find that there are some things that she educates you on? Some things that you learn from the, your little sister that, like you said, you might not know about, you know, particularly with the younger generation. And, and it all has to do with technology. It all has to do with technology. She's like, I asked her something about, she just got a, an iPhone that's better than mine. Right. And I said, I don't have that on my phone. And she's like, go here, go here, go here and do this. And I'm like, wait, slow yeah, down. Right, I can't. Right. So it's mostly surrounding technology that she educates me. You know, so the part that I love, because I saw this from my, my son. So I have an iPhone, but I'm doing the one finger hunt and peck thing, yeah. you know, and he takes two, yeah. the two thumbs. I mean, you know, I mean, it's. I can't do I can't, it I that way either. I, can, I tried it once and the message was like, I don't know. Yeah. Some, other other language, you know. So, Deb, have you have you seen young ladies go through your program, go into high school, go into college, and then become parents, and then want to circle back and become big sisters? We Does that see happen? that absolutely because the girls in our program, ninety percent of them, we did some research to look at where they are today, and they're graduating from high school and graduating from college. And so then we also have mothers who were once little sisters mm -hmm. saying, I want to give back. And it's wonderful when we get those kind of calls yeah. saying, you know, I was a little sister once and I know the impact it had on me, that my big sister really helped f keep me focused till I graduated from high school when my friends didn't. And then I went on and graduated from college right. and I want to give back to another girl in the community. So we do see that. It's wonderful. So several years back, you were a part of City Year, the yes. organization that we all know. And you know how intimately involved with the school's City Year yes. uh, was and is. Is that the same dynamic with Big Sisters? Are the Big Sisters involved with the schools? They're involved with the school only to the extent that the little sister goes to the school and they meet with the little sister at the school. Okay. So the relationship that we have as an organization is with the school itself. So we're say at, we're at the Blackstone or Josiah uh -huh. Quincy. We have a relationship with the principal and the administration there to say, they'll tell us we have all these girls who would benefit from a big sister. So the relationship is more between the organization and the school. But we like to get the big sisters involved in terms of knowing the environment of the school, some of the issues in the school, right. so that they can understand that girl in the environment in which she is going to school. So yeah. in, that, in that way, yes. We're in, we're in many of the Boston public schools. We're also schools in Quincy and Cambridge as well. But Boston Public Schools is the, you know, the main public school system. Very open yeah, oh, to, very, you know. absolutely. We have a great program between uh, Boston Latin Academy and Trotter Elementary Schools. Mm -hmm. And that is with, it's a different program because the big sisters are high school students. And they're mentoring girls, elementary school girls at the Trotter. And they're w actually walking around the corner to go to the Trotter School, meeting with the girl at the school, after school. And there's a leadership component of it, so the um, the big sisters are learning about leadership and how to mentor, and then they're mentoring the little sister. So it's great because they're both in the same community, mm -hmm. and the big sister's really looking to get that girl to want to go to Boston Latin Academy. So really helping her establish goals and getting nice. her excited about school, and that's the program we've had since 2007, and it's very successful. So talk to